It's here, it's here, it's here. Thank you very much to Nikki for that book. And uh, I'm going to show you what these are in just a minute. All right, this is uh, Friday morning. I finished my wife's chicken fried steak off. That was pretty good. And uh, what I gotta do is replace these uh, rubber tires. I don't think it's hard, but I gotta get it off of this. And what I noticed is this bearing behind the blade here, that bearing has a real deep groove in it. And I may have to replace that bearing too. I've got a lot of use out of this DeWalt Portaban, and uh, I'm not complaining. Well, anyway, let me uh, get this off of there and uh, set it down on my bench where I can work on it. All right, there we go. And my uh, first thing I'm going to do is get the blade off, and there's this lever behind here, right here, that loosens everything up and then uh, the blade comes off so what I'm gonna do is set you on the tripod and uh, I know how you like to watch there we go but first, let me go start my air conditioner. It's already hot in here. Turn my air conditioner and my fan off. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off so I can get a look at them. I'll tell you what, I'm not. Uh, it was an optical illusion. Both of these bearings, that one and the one here, probably I don't know if you can see that. The one on the bottom, they both look identical. They both have a little groove in them and I think it's a factory groove. So I'm not going to mess with that at all. Alright, I think these are going to be pretty easy to get off. Oh man, these are melted on there. Good Lord. Huh. Good Lord. It might not be as easy as I thought it was going to be. Well, I'll tell you what. I may have no choice but to take these wheels off. Let me see if I can get this off without too much trouble. Ah. It's a Torx and a straight blade. I may have to go get a big Torx. Ah, yeah. Doggone it. I knew this wasn't going to be easy. Nothing ever goes like it should. Huh. Yeah, this is just melted on there terribly. So... That is gonna take. Let's let's just see. I'm gonna try to pull this off, and then I'll have a look at it. Let me see, let me take a look through the viewfinder, see what you're seeing here. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I let this get way too hot. It is coming off though.
golly. I don't think these were glued on. Look at how much that has worn compared to the new one. I tell you, I'm not sure. I gotta do this right. So I'm gonna stop the camera. I'm gonna go get my uh, Torx with uh, my impact wrench and get these both uh, top and bottom ones off. Let me go ahead and see if I can get this, uh, this one off here. Maybe this one didn't get as hot. Now it's it's the same way, melted on there. So what I'm gonna have to do is uh, take these off. Jeez. If I can't get these off, I'll have to go get my, because uh, these are Torx fittings. Torx, Torx head. And uh, I don't want to strip them with my straight blade. Now let's see if we can get it off. Wasn't that something? Got a little chain. Well, this is good. I can, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to do this right. Uh, I've gotta clean all this up. And uh, since I got it apart, oil that chain clean the chain up is the chain is just covered in uh, metal and all that so uh, it just makes sense to fix it right I've had it long you know I've had it a while and have cut a lot of metal with it so uh, it really deserves to be uh, cleaned up and taken care of so I'm gonna cut you off and the next time you come on you're probably gonna be over in my other shop Okay, I lied. Oh, Lordy, what a mess. This is acetone. And uh, I'm going to clean it. It is definitely cleaning this rubber up out of these grooves and everything. And it's got to come clean before I can get the new ones on there. Uh, I will cut you off and go to my other shop and get some tools and bring them back here. I just don't feel like getting out in the heat. And I got my air conditioner just a humming away back there, making it comfortable. Tell you what, I'm gonna. I've got some 91% uh, alcohol. I'm gonna pour that in here too. Acetone's expensive. It's coming, it's coming, coming clean.
much stuff does not want to come off. Oh yeah, that's stuck on there. Well, next time I, I'll have to remember not to get this so hot. All right, I'm not gonna make you watch all this. It's gotta be like watching somebody cut grass. When I, when I get it cleaned up, I'll bring you back. Okay, I, we are going to the other shop. Here, uh, you know, right here is where I do all my wood. And uh, I'm getting stuff on this table that I don't want to get on my wood handle. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to take everything over to my other shop. And uh, my grease is there too. I, I intend to re-grease or at least put some grease on these bearings and uh, clean everything up real good. And uh, I've got some special... Uh, solvent out there too that I can use all right I've got everything off I'm gonna soak this and this and this here I'll get you I'll give you a look at that how nasty it is I'm gonna get that all cleaned up and uh, that looks okay probably put a little grease on that shaft there so uh, let me put you in my secret solvent and uh, we will be right back. All right, my uh, my secret solvent is, oh, wait a minute now, is it? No, it's not. So I'm gonna have to dump that and resort to my top secret solvent. And now that you know what my top secret solvent is, you can't leave here unless you sign the non-disclosure act. All right, let me go, uh, safely uh dispose of that all right let me get this wheel on and then we'll move over to my other workbench and uh put a little grease in here these fit in these little grooves and what you do is you get them started not easy to do well it is easy to do but there we go. Golly. The other one went on so easy. Why didn't I just record that one, huh? All right, jeez. Now we gotta uh, go around and make sure these are, these little notches are all in the, there are little holes there. Okay, that was, okay. That, that's done. It's uh, easier than I made it look. <laughs> so now we go and uh, grease this a little bit. I've already, oh, uh, I've already put that on that side. Uh, basically, all you do is line the hole, these three holes, you got to line them up with that sprocket underneath there. I cleaned all that out. 
I grease the chain, I put the sprocket back on, and then you have to slide this over and line these three holes up with the sprocket. No big deal. So, well, first of all, let me put a little bit of grease in here. All right, I think that's enough. Clean this up a little bit. This is nothing to line up. And that is a T30. Okay, now we go put the blade on it back at the other shop. We're done out here. See you back at the other place. All right, here we are. It'll take a little while for these to oh take a set i guess is the word but uh <laughs> what a difference between those and uh <sighs> this is incredible huh I, I can't believe they were so bad all right on to knife making okay we're recording trying to get this off so you can get a better look at him. Okay, this is the gecko. gecko that does not have any hands, or feet rather, on his back legs. He's got uh, hands him. on the front. Could stop moving him. Okay, I'll show a spot on him. Okay, um, he has rubbed uh, like a sore because he doesn't have any legs and he's dragging the back end of his body around. He's got a sore on, a, on his belly bottom bottom and uh so what are you gonna do with him i caught him and i i just uh i don't know i guess i will turn him loose i thought about putting him in a little barely oh. has like a little terrarium he's got little nubs back there and they wore i think when i caught him i actually moved toward the and he his tails all wore off and yeah but you know, earlier in the summer, I found him. Remember, he was riding on the back of yeah, a. Yeah, he was back. Uh, what do they call that? Piggyback and uh, yeah, another, another gecko. Yeah. Or who knows what they were actually doing? Since we don't know the habits of. Uh, Look, when I caught him, he was green. Yeah. What is he now? He's brown. Huh. He changed colors. Okay, you gotta let him go now. No, he'll die. He'll die. I just wanna see if I can feeding for a little while. Oh, don't move. Now, I finally got a good shot of his feetless legs. And he's got this weird bump right at the at his butt, right in front of the tail. Yeah, where he's been dragging it all these yeah. since. Huh. Well, you know, he's lived on the porch this long. But yes. When I seen him, he was dragging his butt on the, on the boards. Uh, yeah. 
and he doesn't have feet he got little stumps yeah. so uh we're gonna get him hooked up with some uh prosthetic feet <laughs> maybe a little wheelchair a gecko wheelchair I'm a, I thought or had a... or we can call that insurance company and see if they gecko? need a mascot gecko. yeah gecko. gecko needs a gecko well okay. anyway i just thought it was interesting that he lived and it is a key because yeah. i've seen his throat yeah, it's, it's been, uh, what, a month and a half or so yes, since well. we saw him piggyback in that other lizard? Well, I can't believe he was still on the floor. I figured he'd be dead by now, but I, I caught him. So, if I can find a place to put him. Like a fish aquarium? Well, yeah, it was something with a lid, and um, I, would, I would get mealworms for him. Mealworms? You think he eats mealworms? Yeah. I think he will eat anything that he can yeah. catch. Anything that you bring to him, he'll probably eat, huh? Yeah, well, I'm going to go get some mealworms. Okay. Okay. I have all these sanded up to 600. Uh, now they're ready for heat treating. That's North Country, Mike's, and Mystery Subscriber. So uh, I'm going to heat treat these and put them in the tempering oven, and that's all for today. Maybe I may come out here. Uh, I have uh, a neck knife and two dinner skinners plus uh, Towers VC Special. I may go ahead, uh, once I get these in the tempering oven, I may go ahead and get the, this and the two dinner skinners ready to, you know, put in boxes and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know yet. I'll wait till I get these all heat treated and in the tempering oven, and then I'll decide what I'm going to do next. Otherwise, uh, have a good Saturday, y'all. It, it's really, really weird how life, no matter how far away from where you started in life, names pop up and uh, bring back memories. First of all, let me tell you about a kind of a, a stinking dirty thing a company called Cousineau Wood Products has done. Yesterday, I ordered some uh, wood called Dymalux. It's a multi-layered plywood, very hard type of thing for handles, knife handles. And, you know, they come in scale size pieces. Well, they have were having a clearance sale on the pink, and they were $6.99. And then when I checked out, they were suddenly ten ninety nine. Well, it was too late. I had already checked out. And then for shipping, they had no other options but UPS, which was twenty three bucks. So, I you know I I went ahead and bought them. I need this stuff. I have a knife you know order that somebody wants, and uh, I went ahead and ordered it. And I bought three of them because. Uh, they're so cool they go with the uh camo pink kydex that i bought oh and i also have this new uh pink camo paracord that it's all gonna go really good together they like, looks pretty cool only like kuzino wood products so i get a thing this morning saying that they had shipped them and those sobs are shipping it through the post office they charge me ups level uh, postage fees and then shipped it through the post office which I know you can sh I know you can fit three pieces of them handles in a box uh, for eight bucks eight and a half bucks so uh, they screwed me on the sale price which didn't exist and they screwed me on the shipping Cousineau wood products you people are dirty 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 well that got me to thinking about when I was growing up, I was a little boy. I was a very small kid. Uh, there was this bully in sixth grade. His name was Rick Cousineau. And uh, my memory is this. There was a kid that was even smaller than me that had some physical issues. One of them, one of them was stuttering. That wasn't a physical issue. He was a, a really bad stutterer. And uh, he had some physical issues 
And, but he was a nice kid, and he was a friend of mine. And his name was Brian Anderson. This was sixth grade, so I doubt he lives there anymore. And Rick Cousineau had been picking on Brian Anderson constantly, constantly, constantly. Now, I was a small kid, and I did not like violence. But I had had all the Rick Cousineau I could take picking on my friend Brian. So I kind of, he was going to beat up Brian after school and all that. And you know how kids do. Anyway, I stood up in defense of Brian and I said, if you're going to beat him up, you're going to have to beat me up. And apparently that was not going to be a problem for him. So anyway, Brian and I... Uh, I put on, after school, I wore Brian's jacket because that's who we was really wanting to beat up was Brian. And anyway, that was one of the first fights I ever had was me and Rick Cousineau. And of course, I got my butt kicked because I was a little kid. Brian got home okay, and he got to kick my butt. Anyway, uh, so I paid attention th to Rick Cousineau all through uh, grammar school, and then junior high, and then high school, and Rick Cousineau was a bully all through school. And uh, I was thinking that couldn't possibly be the same Cousineau. So anyway, I googled Rick Cousineau in Enfield, Connecticut, Richard Cousineau, 61 years old, found out where he lived, still lives in Enfield, never left that town, and yeah, he's got a really nice big house, and I was hoping he was a failure you know, living in a van down by the river, but no, successful, damn it, got a nice house, damn it, you know, probably got a supermodel wife, and probably never had to pay once for being a bully his whole life, and who knows, he may be a bully now, uh, let's hope he's not a cop, because uh, bullies tend to seem to gravitate towards that, you know, where they can still bully people. Anyway, just a thought uh, how one little thing triggers memories, and uh, I went so far as to Google his name, and sure enough, my worst fear has come true. He's quite successful and has a lovely home, and uh, he had a uh, karate studio. <laughs> the worst of the worst. So uh, about halfway through my last cup of coffee, and I'm still thinking about Rick Cousineau. And it reminded me of when my life changed in school. I hated school. Hated it, hated it, hated it. And uh, I quit school. I didn't graduate. I quit school. I just could not take any more school. But anyway, here's when my life changed. It was seventh grade. And that is when I realized that some people didn't understand anything but pain. Physical pain is all that would stop them from bothering you or bullying you or trying to hurt you. And uh, it was shocking. I beat a kid up that had been I don't mean, I mean beyond bullying me to the point where he actually came to my house. And his name was David Clark. And uh, he had a brother that was my friend. His name was Daryl Clark. And he could not understand. He didn't know why his brother David was doing that. But uh, anyway, David Clark was getting some kind of evil joy from antagonizing me. And one day he came to my house which was taboo. I mean, back in them days, you know, you could do all your bullying and picking on in school and after school and on the way home from school. But when people got to their house, that's where it ended. Your house was your safe space, right? Not David Clark. He broke the unwritten rule. He came to my house. And that's when I found the beast that I did not know existed within me. And I beat David Clark up so bad that it scared me to death that I was capable of that. And David Clark showed up in school for the next week or two with black eyes and bloody noses. And, uh, uh, I mean, he, you know, I, I beat the crap out of him. In the next few days, he had black eyes. And, of course, everybody wanted to know what happened, and I was quite happy to tell them. 
And you know what? It changed me, and it changed David Clark. I never saw him pick on anyone again. And he became a meek, mild-mannered, quiet kid. There was an acorn falling on my metal roof here. Not a shot. Anyway, that was a life-changing moment for me. Okay, I'm fixing to uh, go to the shop. As soon as I drink the last bit of this coffee, I'm headed to the shop. I got three more knife orders. I need to write their information down and uh, get boxes started for them. But uh, I'm not going to get started on them until I finish the five that I'm working on now.